Hello, this is the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Thank you so much for tuning into this review of index laws. So by the end of this video, I want you to be able to use all of these index laws to simplify expressions. Now these index laws are nothing new, you would have learned them already. So let's just go quickly through what each says. So the first one says, when you multiply bases, so here A is the base, B and C are the powers. When you multiply the same base, you add the powers. If you divide Adding the same base, you subtract the powers. Index law three says if you have a product to a power, you just raise each thing in the product to the power. Another way of saying that is the power of the product is the same as the product of the powers. Index law four, if you have a fraction raised to a power, you just raise the top to that power and the bottom to that power power. Index law 5 says anything except 0 when raised to the power of 0 gives you 1. Like 2 to the power of 0 is 1, 3 to the power of 0 is 1, and so on. And finally, number 6, often called power of a power rule. If you raise a power to another power, you keep the same base and multiply the powers. So let's look now at how we might simplify some expressions using these laws. So let's start off with a simple one like this. So we're going to first expand the brackets. So the way we're going to expand the brackets, we need two index laws. We need this one because we have a product inside the brackets. And we also need this one because we're raising a power to a power. So this index law here says when I have product raised to a power, I raise the first thing to that power. 2 to the power of 5 is 32. You can use your calculator for that. And then I raise the second thing to that power. Now, x cubed to the power of 5, so that's power to a power. Keep the same base, multiply the two powers. And I'm going to leave the 8x alone now. So now I'm going to simplify this fraction. 32 divided by 8 is 4. We do the numbers and the letters separately. So x to the power of 15 divided by x, if you're dividing bases, you keep the same base and subtract the powers. x and x to the power of 1 are the same, so it will be 15 minus 1, x to the power of 14. Let's look at a harder example. So let's have a go at simplifying this expression here. So once again, I'm going to do the two sets of brackets first. Now this time, the 3 is outside the bracket. So the 3 is not getting raised to the power of 4. Unlike here where the 2 was inside the brackets and I did raise it to the power of 5. So I'm going to leave the 3 alone. x to the power of 6 to the power of 4. Keep the same base and multiply the powers. And I'll do likewise for the y's. So I'll leave the bottom of this fraction alone at the moment. So the second fraction, I'm going to raise the top to the power of 3. So that will be x to the power of 9. I need to multiply the powers over y to the power of 24. So hopefully you remember, when you're dividing by a fraction, you flip the fraction and make it a times. So now I'm just going to multiply the tops, the two numerators, and multiply the denominators. So on top, the 3x to the power of 24, that stays. y to the power of 8 times y to the power of 24. So here I'm multiplying bases, so I just added the powers, and I'm going to do similarly on the bottom. Keep the same base and add the powers, and the y has no friends, so I leave it as it is. So 3 over 27 simplifies to 1 over 9. x to the power of 24 divide x to the power of 13 gives me x to the power of 11. And y to the power of 32, divide y to the power of 9, keep the same base and subtract the powers. How easy is that? So I just want to do a couple of quick examples involving this index law now. So questions involving the zero index law will often ask you to evaluate. That means give the value of, your answer should just be one number. So for this one here, if x does not equal zero, x to the power of zero is one. But the order of operations means I do this first. Only the x is getting raised to the power of 0. So the answer to this one is just 3 times x to the power of 0 is 1. So it's 3. Down the bottom here, 
I'm told X and Y are both not equal to zero. So that means what's in the bracket is not equal to zero. In this second one, I'm raising everything in the brackets to the power of zero, and anything raised to the power of zero is one. All right, thank you so much for tuning into this video. This has been the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Have a great day.